first thing you notice is the flash. The flash of silver when the school turns is one, like a single creature with a thousand heartbeats, swirling and veering in the plankton-rich currents where oceans meet. As we descended, adrenaline infused our euphoria, fear. I stood helpless and enclosed with my cage mates, a professor from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and two of his MBA students. We didn't know where or when it would appear. As they scanned left, right, and below, I fixed my gaze at two o'clock on the gloom beyond the school. Abruptly, the school vanished. And in its void, a deeper gloom materialized. Unhurried, almost leisurely, she appeared. I withdrew my hands from the cage bars and held them to my sides. I stared. At 17 feet, she was gargantuan. The size and bulk of an SUV, she angled towards us with casual sweeps of her massive caudal fin. As she approached closely, I detected what no film or image had ever revealed to me. Her eyes were not black. Her eyes were slate gray with discreet, lighter pupils. Those pupils. Those eyes locked on us. And as she swam even closer, her 3,500 pound mass created a wave, actually pushing us back within the cage. Her nearness and her closeness terrified us. Have you ever been truly terrified? Well, that moment defined the word for me. Yet terror mingled with fascination as we watched the sun shimmering off her camouflaged skin just feet away. If it weren't for the caution she commanded, I could have actually touched her. The great white sharks of Hans Bay, South Africa, are known the world over for their regular appearance in the chill waters off the Western Cape. I had come to observe them, to study them firsthand clad in a three millimeter wetsuit to guard against the 59 degree Benguela current, I hovered at waterline. And in between the lifting of the green swells, I caught glimpses of the rugged coastline beyond. Well, the schools returned, coalesced, and swirled in what's known as predator confusion effect. This is when prey species band together to move as a single larger creature to confuse and discourage potential predators. Now, given this effect, it's actually possible to detect the arrival of a predator, not by its appearance, but by the activity preceding its advance. Think of it as nature's early warning system. And in time, as I could discern the appearance of these giants, fascination displaced fear. Well, the schools banked, dispersed, and then this. Once again, in slow motion. There are many compelling reasons to strive to extend our senses, to give us every advantage of perception in this incredibly competitive world of ours. Yet I can think of few more compelling reasons than a lunging, biting great white shark. Now, if you're thinking this is about sharks, the only part of the story. You see, while that encounter taught me much about sharks, it taught me far more about us humans. And it's this contextual understanding that opens a window on the wild world. 1,260 miles to the northeast of Hansby, I exchanged my wetsuit for a pair of trekking boots. It was here that stepping from the Land Rover was more than simply leaving a vehicle. 
It was stepping from the false security of our human world and into the honest savagery of the African bush. Led by our guide, Kyle, I was joined by my friend and college roommate, Al. We were exploring the border region of South Africa's Kruger National Park. Now, Kruger is a vast park, larger than many countries, and it's home to a rogues gallery of lethal predators, spotted hyena, leopards, Nile crocs, black mambas, to name just a few. Our bushwalk was brief, scarcely an hour. That's Kyle to my left as we cautiously entered the Sabi River Basin. We didn't speak of it, yet we all sensed it. A hypervigilance which drew our attention to the acacia trees at the far limit of our vision. And while I was engrossed in searching for animal sign from black rhino tracks to tiny dung beetles along the way, I couldn't shake the gripping sensation that we were being targeted by something. Now this wasn't a nagging feeling I could simply dismiss. This was new, unnerving, and certain. I've been charged by grizzlies. That's overt, in-your-face aggression, the kind of experience that puts you on high alert. This, this was different. In the oddly intense quiet, which descended upon the bush, we felt watched, studied. There was good reason. They're known as the pride of eight. Eight full-grown African lions who patrol the vicinity of the Sabi River. That day, while we tracked elephants and searched for buffalo spore along the river, the pride of eight tracked us. This stark fact was confirmed by another guide upon our return to the lodge on foot. He shared with cautionary emphasis the pride of eight shadow you yanks from 200 meters out, he told us, just beyond the edge of our vision. Palpable, yet hidden. The great cats had stalked us, shielded from us by the limits of our senses. It was in that moment of adrenaline-stoked clarity I realized two things. That deep beneath the shallow surface of our senses lie the newly limitless capabilities the animals in our midst, and that by tapping into this uncanny animal detection, we can wield life-saving advantage. Over the millennia, humans have looked to animals to detect the presence of food, water, shelter, even medicine, yet their capabilities extend far beyond that. In December of 2004, just one hour prior to the onslaught of one of the most powerful tsunamis in modern history, elephants trumpeted and fled for higher ground in Sri Lanka's Yala National Park. At nearly the same time, flamingos inexplicably abandoned their low-lying breeding grounds in India's Point Calamere Wildlife Sanctuary. And while this was all happening, zoo animals throughout the region refused to leave their shelters against all routine. Undoubtedly, these creatures have so much to share, so much they can teach us. Yet animals aren't the only teachers out there. When I was just six, my dad taught me to explore the limits of my night vision. Knowing my curiosity and my love of animals, he posed a question. He said, how would you like to see in the dark like a cat? I nodded with wide eyes. What six-year-old wouldn't? He knelt down and he shared his secret. He said, when you're looking for something at night, don't look directly towards it. Look around it. Look past it. Over the years, I'd come to realize that by gazing skyward or at the periphery of an object, those 240 million tiny receptors along the edges of my retinas, known as rods, would begin to pick up the ambient light. And then, something amazing would happen. The outline of the object would begin to appear in the center of my field of view. Fast forward 10 years, when my dad's teaching me how to drive at night, 
brave man, my dad. He gave me brilliant yet simple advice. He said, don't look for the lights of an approaching vehicle on the road. Look for them on the trees, in the distance, before the vehicle crests the hill or rounds the bend. In essence, by focusing on the elements around me, he taught me to see what had been unseen. Oftentimes, it's advance. And once again, this notion of contextual understanding whispered in my ear. For me, there's a place that gives voice to that whisper. The confluence of the Douglas River and the Pacific Ocean in Alaska's Katmai National Park is home to one of the greatest concentrations of the planet's largest terrestrial carnivore, the Alaskan brown bear. This is a land of superlatives, of glacier-mantled mountains amid erupting volcanoes, of swift rivers carving vast tracts of tundra, a land where the nation's largest state and the world's largest ocean compete to create unparalleled coastline. That's the boot of one of my fellow brown bear researchers. It's a size 12, and it's dwarfed to scale to that brown bear track from our study area. I love this image, because if there was ever any doubt, it proclaims loudly, quite literally, that nature is far greater than us. And it's through this lens of humility that we can see farther, clearly. As a person of science, I need to see proof. In fact, I demand it. I needed to know if what I sensed in the waters off the Cape of Good Hope or in the bush border in Kruger was real or imagined. Yet every time doubt threatened to eclipse my unshakable sensation, the animals confirmed what I had perceived. And the vigilant curiosity that inspired me then inspires me right now to explore. This journey brings me to the crossroads of proof and wonder. For while it's true that science demands proof, scientific advancement is born of wonder. What I learned in the chill waters off Hansby is far greater than any shark. That white shark taught me something invaluable. Eyes enable us to look. Knowledge enables us to see. And while I didn't fully realize it at the time, with that shark my dad and that bear were teaching me what the lessons nature can teach all of us, all of us to endeavor to explore beneath the surface. Thank you.